Hi everyone, this is Joy Paris for RichGirlNetwork.tv. We're here at the Paramount Studios to talk to the cast and crew of Marvel's Runaways. Cannot wait to find out more about Season 2. Stay tuned and keep watching RichGirlNetwork.tv. Think of it right now. <laughs> I, sh I should have changed before the interview. I would be so. I know. Much I cooler. changed. I, I was like black on black at Doc Martens, like combat. Oh, forget it. <laughs> it was really cool. Oh. Well. And now you're in. <laughs> no. Oh, nice. Hi, I'm James Marsters, and I play Victor Stein. And I'm Ever Carradine, and I play Janet Stein. You know, I uh, last year Victor. Uh, Victor was designed to die off. He was uh, kind of a disposable villain, and they decided to to keep him around. Um, and so, really, uh, we're starting to see m the human being behind the the douchebag. You know, like I I think that he was he was designed to be hated, and now they're exploring him uh, in a deeper way. They did a lot last season. I mean, that's one of the one of the great things about the show is there are no real villains. There are people who are in such pressurized situations that they're making the wrong decisions. But there, nobody is a true villain. Uh, but it's nice to have um, have the writers exploring Victor uh, a little more rather than just the guy who's always creating pain. And Janet, I mean, I think last year, much of what you saw of Janet was Janet, the mother and the wife. And I think that this year you get to see a lot more of who Janet gets to use more of herself because she, without her husband by her side, gets to kind of um, show her kick smarts. Butt. She's kick a little butt. Yeah. Sure. Say some fun scientific mathematical stuff. And, uh, and also, I think that... I love the way that you get to see Janet and Victor working together this season uh, as a meeting of the minds as opposed to like a meeting of the spouses. It's a, it's a much more, it's a, it's a really, like you're saying, it adds another level to our relationship that yeah. really was fun. In season one, we saw how the two characters meet and they, they're both physicists. They're on equal footing when they meet in college. Uh, and it's great to get back to that. Uh, where you can tell that the attraction between these two people is really, uh, it's a physical attraction. Physical. And it's a meeting of, it's a meeting of the minds. Yeah, it's an intellectual thing. See, well. I want another flashback because my cousin played young Janet and everybody was like, how did they find that girl that looked and sounded just like you? I'm like, we can't waste her. We got to bring back young Janet one more time. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about, about being really, really intelligent is, is that, uh, you know, Victor doesn't feel intelligent. It's just to him, everyone else is an idiot. So it's very kind of frustrating to go through the day. But Janet like, well, Jan boring. But she's also, you know, the way that it's written and the way that I tried to help it evolve is like it's a scratching of the surface for Janet. She doesn't come out of the gate being like, I can solve this problem. It's really a slow burn until she finds, until she's empowered. And now I'm very curious to see how that long-term is going to affect Janet and Victor because the relationship that was is turned on its head a little bit. Yeah. I always, I, I like to play characters that, um, that people might want to hate. And, and feel like maybe I'm the only one in their corner. Uh, I, I, I happen to think that there, there are no villains. There are people that I disagree with a lot, but I, think this, I just think that we make mistakes and we hurt each other. Uh, and we can call that villainous if we want. And maybe we're all villains sometimes, and maybe we're all heroes sometimes. Uh, but I, I, there's, a, there's, an, there's a special uh, kind of love and protection that I get when I feel like I'm the only one who understands this person and I'm the only one fighting for them. Um, and I, I, I feel like it's my job to uh, let the writers write as extreme as they want and have the character do the most heinous things as they can imagine and, and, and this, just see if I can keep the audience from flushing the character and see if there's a way through that. Yeah. Um. 
what did I bring to that? I, you know, I don't know. I think she's, I think owning her power and then sort of liking, I think that Janet coming into her own in pride also and feeling like she has a, a voice in a really big room of very power, powerful people, but that she has something to say and she is the one to follow to get to a solution. I think that that's, that's really, I'm excited to see how it all played out on screen, but playing it in the room was fun. And I was said before in some of these interviews, like some of my favorite pride scenes are when we don't all get along and we don't all understand each other and there's conflict and there's messiness because the truth of the matter is we're not friends. We are all, fo we were forced into this situation by Jonah and now we've got to work together because all of our kids are missing. I think that Janet is actually a lot more um, secure than Victor. Like, like we're about equally smart, but Victor is one of those people that will remind you that he's smart all the time because he's, he's got that insecurity that he needs to put that out there all the time. Whereas Janet oh, yeah, just she knows. Gives you the room. She's like, yeah, you like, go. I know I've, I've already got the solution yeah. to the problem, but if you need to go show everyone exactly. how you figure it out. I've got a 175 yeah. IQ, but it's I don't fine. have to tell you that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not sure that the show is overtly political. Um, it's really examining this gulf between the generations that opens up. Uh, it, it really kind of had me re-examining myself as a parent. Um, before I had kids, I, I was a theater producer and we did subversive theater. And I was the rebel uh, theater producer in Chicago and Seattle. And it went really well. Um, and then I had a child and I came down to Los Angeles um, to join the enemy. <laughs> Right, and to just go to the center of the consumerist culture and get put makeup on and, and be the pretty boy in order to feed my family. And that's all good, and I lucked out, and that's wonderful. But when my son looks at me, he doesn't see the rebel subversive theater guy, he sees the TV actor. And that kind of, you know, you know <laughs> I, was so cool. I was so cool. Was so you cool. don't get it, but you know, like runaways takes that situation and just turns it up to 11, you know? And um, there are things that parents do to provide for their kids, and sometimes we, we, we sacrifice our own morality, and we become less than our best selves just so we can put food on the table. And then the, at some point the kids get old enough to see us clearly, and it's horrifying. And, and so um, that's, that's kind of a truth all over the world since we had fire, since we invented fire, this has been true. And that's what this show is talking about. But I also think it's talking about like, everyone has to get very focused on what they believe in and what they're willing to give up to hold true to who they are. And I think that when in this insane political climate that we're in, I think that's more important than ever. Who are you? What are you willing to stand up for? And what does it mean to you to fight for it? And I think that, that show, this, that's what we're dealing with, even though we're dealing with it with kids and parents. But everyone's got to get pretty focused on who they are. Wow, much better answer. <laughs> that was really good. So you got it. That's Thanks. exactly it. I read the wow. scripts. <laughs> um, maternal, smart, and kind. Smarter than everyone. <laughs> Yeah, my Twitter's Ever Caradine and my Instagram is official Ever Caradine. Do you know yours or do you have to yes. tell me? It's simple. They're both the same for Twitter and Instagram so that I can remember it. James Marsters OF as an official, but it's just of. So, yeah. Oh, is that what the OF is for? Yeah, it's not really, it's not really very clear. I read it as of. I know, I know. I'm so glad to know that. <laughs> you thought I was so I weird. Well, I was like, what is it like a, a it's, It would be better. Yeah, that would be better than what we did, but now it's what it is. It is. You're stuck. You're stuck. Just enigmatic. Yeah.